Hi, this is Steve Adamco, interior designer and licensed builder in the state of Michigan in the Kalamazoo greater metro area. And we're going to be talking about why should the building contractor be the designer too? Now, I came across this on a local builder website and they say, let us count the reasons. And they've got six reasons some of which um, I can somewhat agree with, other ones I'm going to take issue with. So their first one is designed by individuals in touch with today's construction costs. Well, anybody that contracts to construct a home is going to be in touch with that. So they say a design builder will be better able to educate you on the cost of things and design better toward your preferred spending goals. And then they say, just remember, the more nice things you design into your project, the more it will cost, exclamation mark. Well, hello, that's pretty commonsensical, isn't it? The better things and the nicer things that you put in your project, the more it's going to cost. Duh. I mean, come on. Uh, are they going to be able to better educate you on the cost of things? Yeah, but. Are you buying a house? Are you building a house just relatively based on the cost of things, even though that's an important issue? I mean, you do want a, a design. You do want some benefits. You do want a certain look, a certain feel, a certain ambiance. That's what you're paying your money for. Number two, streamline the entire process. No separate silos, so better communication. Reduce surprises and eliminate the blame game. Well, you know, you get good people, you don't have the blame game, and you do have phenomenal communication. You know, say for instance, um, you get a great architect, a great builder, and a great interior designer, three people. What else can you remember or think of that's composed of three people that are fabulous? Hmm. Well, I can think of um, a couple of really great bands, Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble. How about ZZ Top? Okay. One guy sings, plays guitar. The other guy plays bass. The other drums. Hmm. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, let's think about other things like a great builder and then Frank Lloyd Wright and um, some other great designer, whether it be a lighting designer or what have you. You know, you can have wonderful communication processes going on there. So the fact that they think that when it's in-house, it's going to be so much better. No, nah, not necessarily. A lot of times you get a great builder, but they have a mediocre designer or you know somebody that's young and just out of school and they're picking out colors. Oh, they're designing? They're picking out colors. Now, a lot of those people aren't that great. They're not top-notch. I've seen builders that are fantastically top-notch and their little interior decorators and designers are not even at that level. They're like a uh, apprentice carpenter relative to the whole scenario. So I don't buy into that. Number three, they got increased accountability. There's a single point of accountability regarding what can or can't be done and no finger pointing. Well, that's a lot of BS too. You know, uh, <laughs> You've got drawings, you've got specifications. That's accountability right there. That's what they call documentation, okay? It's right there on the drawings, in print, in black and white. Okay, cohesive interaction between designer and builder. They are one and the same. Well, a lot of times they're not very good. They might be a great builder, but they're not a fantastic designer. I can attest to that all day long. They go on to say, someone who designs and builds should have a wealth of experience which benefits you and saves you from making decisions you later regret. Uh, another bunch of bullshit right there, right there. You know, they're trying to say, well, look, we're all that in a bag of chips. We got the design down, we got the building down, and uh, they got the building down. I, I can attest to that, but they don't have the design down. I can see that just by their work. They're not that classy when it comes to the design part. They're not that elite when it comes to the design part. Now, I know I'm being straight and blunt, but you know what? I like straight and blunt. 
I don't like a bunch of BS. You know, there's a lot of these people that think they got everything under one roof. And a lot of times it doesn't work that way. I've led architects on big jobs. I mean, banks, country clubs, houses in the Caribbean. So I know what I'm talking about. And I'm also a licensed builder too. So, you know, like I say, this is a bunch of uh, sales fluff that, wow, you know, we're the whole enchilada. We're the whole thing in one big package. Well, like I say, the they're great builders, but like I say, I haven't seen too many builders that have great designers on staff or great interior designers on staff. It just doesn't happen. I mean, what the heck are you going to get for like, maybe 15, 20, 25 bucks an hour. Not the best. You sure aren't going to get the best. And like they say, you know, it saves you from making decisions you later regret. Well, you've got to ask the right questions to get the right answers to deliver exactly, precisely the right results. That's the way I do business. And when you have really smart, sharp, capable people, you never have decisions that you regret especially like for myself, you know, I put myself in the client's shoes and do it with my expertise. That's the way I've done it ever since 1982. All right. So number five here, quick resolution to differing interpretations or challenges. There's no one else to blame. Expect only solutions, exclamation mark. Huh, different interpretations or challenges. Well, uh, what if you, the client, doesn't agree with or has a differing opinion from the builder. Hmm, that's interesting. What if the builder has a different opinion or interpretation from the client? Hmm, that's interesting too. I wonder if they ever thought about that. Now, number six, reduced delivery schedule. Reduced delivery schedule. Planning for construction can start happening while drawings are being developed, which shaves time off the delivery schedule. Um. Well, I guess I got to take issue with that too. What happens if you want to change? I mean, you're paying for it, Mr. or Mrs. Client. You know, you want the best and you might decide, hey, I just realized that I need this or that. Well, what if they're already starting the construction and then the drawings change in the middle of the project? Well, then you got to backtrack and say, oh, I better tear that out. Oh, oh, is that shaving time off the delivery schedule? I think not. So again, most of this stuff here is total BS. And it's amazing because this is a well-known builder here in Kalamazoo. And um, yeah, they don't have it. Not when they put it together like this. Their thinking is a little screwed up. It's amazing to me. This is what bugs me about builders. They think they can do everything, that they're the rock of Gibraltar for everything that goes on. You know, I just tell them, just stick to building. Just stick to a hammer, nails, two by fours, all that kind of stuff. Just stick to that. Let somebody else do the design because most of the time you don't have, and I've never seen stellar designers working for a builder. It doesn't happen. Not in the real world. I mean, come on. Um, do you see that in Architectural Digest or any of the high level design stuff? I don't think so. So, anyway, I had to rant on this a little bit because I just, it just irritates me when. I see this stuff written, and um, I had a conversation with these builders too. And boy, I tell you, they didn't get the idea. I said, "Hey, look, design. You know, I'm designer, furniture designer, lighting designer. Hey, we ought to work together, maybe." And one one of the guys is going to take over the company. Said, "Well, I don't see how what you do works with what we do." And I'm thinking, like, what? I'm thinking to myself, like, you got to be thick as I don't know what, thick and dense. I said, "Well." You know, we design homes to live in and that we can furnish them with furniture so that we have a wonderful environment. It's just not the architecture in the building. And then what do you got? One or two chairs and it's not furnished very well. I mean, come on. That's kind of like a woman all dressed up, but no jewelry, no bracelets, no earrings, no eyeshadow, no makeup. And hmm, that's very interesting. So anyway, I'll be doing more stuff regarding this. And um, we're going to pull the uh, <laughs> pull the rug out from under some of these guys. Like I say, I have no issue with their actual building, but their way they think in terms of the building contractor's got to be the designer too. Uh, that's not working. That ain't flying. 
that dog just won't hunt. Not in this situation. That dog just won't hunt in this situation. And I've talked to these people. So it's like, hmm, I wasn't that impressed. Yeah, do I like their building? Yeah, I do. But they just don't have it. They don't have the communication skills. They don't really get the whole orchestrated thing. I mean, it's like a piece of music. Your home is like a piece of music. It's got to be totally orchestrated from front to back. And we're talking about a finished, complete, furnished environment. Not like some of these magazines around Kalamazoo put out there where it's just, oh, we got this house all done and there's just a bed and two nightstands and a lamp. No artwork, no nothing. No, it just looks very, very simplistic in terms of furnishing and very juvenile in kindergarten. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. So anyway, here's uh, six reasons. He says, let us count the reasons, six of them, and every one of them I can rip apart. They don't hold water. So, yeah. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a claw hammer and rip some of this apart. A few crowbars and rip some of this apart because it don't hold. Uh, it doesn't hold. Okay. Um, so anyway, there you go.